I am here with Jeffrey Braithwaite. He's from Australia, uh, from the, Institu uh, the Australian Institute for Health Innovation. And you want to talk a little about quality improvement here, okay? Jeffrey, please, uh, we'd like to have some comments of you. Thank you, Margaret. And thank you very much for the invitation to talk. It's always a pleasure working with ProQualis. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm very interested in my research institute and in my work about clinicians on the front lines of care. Doctors, nurses and allied health professionals who treat patients and make it their life's mission to provide excellent high quality care, safe care to their patients. We've done a lot of studies in the Australian Institute of Health Innovation, as you know, with your membership of ISQA uh, over the years. Um, and we know that ProQualis is very interested in this. So we've done quite a lot of studies. One of the studies we've done is to say, you know, what, what's the situation if you have a good culture versus if you're on the front lines of care in an organization, say a hospital, where you have a poor culture? Do you produce better patient outcomes if you have a good culture versus a poorer culture. So we've done a systematic review on this very issue and um, all the studies were in the same direction. If you have a good culture, one that's productive, where people enjoy working together, where um, there's trust and respect and people are collaborative, versus if you have a poor culture where people don't get on, it's political, it's difficult, you will get much better outcomes. You'll get better organizational outcomes and patient outcomes. So many people around the world are, are interested in improving culture. We've demonstrated that that's a really good use of time to try and improve the culture because you'll get good outcomes for patients. Very good, Jeffrey. Would you like to make other comments? Well, just that um, the other bit about culture uh, uh, for people on the front lines of care delivering care to patients is the, the importance of leadership. And I don't just mean leadership at the top of the hierarchy of the organization structure in the chief executive officer's suite. I mean healthcare works best when there's distributed leadership, when um, the most junior nurse or doctor on the ward can say, hey, look, I've noticed something is wrong or right we should do less of what's wrong and more of what's right. That's leadership. That's yeah. informal leadership. So what we've discovered in our research, and I know you know this at ProQualis too, mm -hmm. is um, leadership is exercised or can be exercised by many people in the organization. We don't have to wait for the people up the line in the hierarchy before we get on with the job of co-leading better care, higher quality care, safer care for patients. Okay. It was wonderful, Jeffrey. Uh, thank you very much for being with us here.